how does an atomic weapon work? How does a, a hydrogen bomb work? Asking for a friend. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So um, at, at its heart, what it ha what you do is you very quickly put together enough of these materials that can undergo fission with room temperature neutrons, mm -hmm. and you put them together fast enough that what happens is that the, this process can essentially grow mathematically, like very fast. Mm -hmm. And so this releases large amounts of energy. So that's the underlying reason that it works. So you've heard of a fusion weapon. So this is interesting is that it is, it, but it's dislike fusion energy in the sense that what happens is that you're using fusion reactions to, but it's simply, it increases the gain actually of the weapon rather than, um, it, it's, it's not a pure, at, at its heart, it's still a fission weapon. You're just using fusion reactions as a sort of an intermediate catalyst basically to, to get even more energy out of it. But it's not directly applicable to, to be used in an energy source. Does it terrify you, just to, again, to step back at the philosophical, that humans have been able to use physics and uh, engineering to create such powerful weapons? I wouldn't say terrify. I mean, we should be... <laughs> this, is the, this is the progress of, of humanity. Every time that we've gotten access, you talk, you know, the day the universe changed. Those really changed when we got access to new kinds of energy sources. But every time you get access, and typically what this meant was you get access to more intense energy, right? That's And that's what that was. And so the ability to move from burning wood to using coal to using gasoline and petroleum, and then finally to use this is that, is that both the potency and the consequences are elevated around those things. It's just like you said, the the way that fusion, nuclear fusion would change the world, I don't think, uh, unless we think really deeply, we'll be able to anticipate some of the things we can create. There's go going to be a lot of amazing stuff, yeah. but then that amazing stuff is gonna enable more amazing stuff and more, unfortunately, or uh, depending how you see on it, m more powerful weapons. Well, yeah, but see, that's the thing. Fusion breaks that trend mm -hmm. in the following way. So, one of them, so fusion doesn't work on a chain reaction. There's no chain reaction, zero. So this means it cannot physically exponentiate away on you because it works. And actually, this is why star. by the way, we know this already. It's why stars are so stable, why most stars and suns are so stable. It's because they are regulated through their own temperature and their heating. Because what's happening is not that there's some probability of this exponentiating away, is that the energy that's being released by fusion basically is keeping the fire hot. Mm -hmm. um, and these tend to be, you know, and when it comes down to thermodynamics and things like this, there's a reason, for example, it's pretty easy to keep a constant temperature like in an oven and things like this. It's the same thing in fusion. So this is actually one of the features that I would argue fusion breaks the, um, breaks the trend of this is that it's, it has more energy intensity than, than, than fission on, on paper, but it actually does not have the consequences of control and sort of rapid release of the energy because it's actually, it, it, the physical system just doesn't want to do that. Yeah. We're gonna have to look elsewhere for the weapons with which we fight World War III. Fair enough.